freedom 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 over fame freedom freedom over cycle stays the same welcome first of all welcome this is unsolicited perspectives and i am your host bruce anthony thank you for listening and watching wherever you get your podcast and video podcast subscribe share like comment and rate us you can find us on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch at unsolicited underscore perspective. You can find us on Twitter and TikTok at unsolicited underscore P-E-R. Watch us live now. Watch us live every Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Twitch and YouTube. Our audience, our audience continues to grow with each and every episode. And I humbly thank you. On today's episode, me and my freedom. sister shooting the breeze. We're talking about AAV, and we're talking fame. about Nazis teaching school. Freedom, freedom over fame. The cycle first stays the first. Same. What's up, sis? So you already corrected me. Already corrected, you. <laughs> already corrected me. It's A A V E. I don't be knowing. It's, it's clear. It's A A E. Some people say African American English. Some people say African American vernacular English. It's it's the same thing. The J J Jojo C. What's that? The D D O J S I O C. What's that? <laughs> if y'all don't get that, that's from Beverly Hills Cop Three. Uh, but what's up, sis? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm feeling better. I'm no longer sick and I got my voice back. Yeah. I mean, you still sound a little stuffy, but so do I. So that's fine. Well, you know now what? I like siblings. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the weather keeps changing, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, it was 40 something degrees and then shot up to like 65 for two days and then shot down to 40. And so you're going through this where in the morning you're wearing like your full puffy triple fat goose winter coat. Right. And then in the afternoon, you're just wearing a sweatsuit because I got to walk the dog. So I'm just wearing a sweatsuit. And then in the evening, again, it's not the big fu- puffy coat, but it's still a winter coat. So your your body is going up and down, up and down. Mm-hmm. And them mm-hmm. trees and them flowers and stuff was like, oh, it's time to come out. So it lit right. up my allergies. And so my allergies was like, oh, I guess it's that time of year. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's not time no, yet. It's, it's not. It's not time yet. But my body was like, no, it's about that time. Let me give you a, a, some allergies. Just, I'm just happy it didn't turn into a sinus give, infection. Let me just give you some allergies. Yeah. Let me just make you allergic to everything in the world. Yeah. <laughs> just give me some allergies. So I know you happy about, you know, the Super Bowl. I know you're really excited about that. Oh, listen. Boy, oh boy. Am I excited about that? Uh, I might get two rings tattooed. Uh, <laughs> I already had a dream we won. I really don't think you should Philadelphia do that. Philadelphia Eagles, by the way. Uh, fly, Eagles, fly. Um, if you'd like, I can sing our fight song. No, thank you. Okay. Well, you know, I, got, I have it on deck. Okay, just don't do that. Yeah. yeah I'm the guy, it's available no, to okay. you, to the audience. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. Very excited okay. to watch the Super Bowl tonight. It's still... I know on the finished product, it's still coming back in my headset. There's still an echo. Oh. I don't know why. It's fine. Yeah, I'll fix it in in post, hopefully. Um, I'm just happy Black History Month. We got two, the first time in Super Bowl history, the starting quarterbacks are both black. Yes. And it's a little something. Hey, (laughs) Jalen. Okay. Yeah, that's the case. I already know. He's he's like 24. Uh, Yeah, he's a young man. I don't think that's the case, though. It feels like it, and that's enough for me. (laughs) 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 It feels like it. That's enough. That's enough for me. And he is a handsome young man. Yeah. And I love that his whole team is black women. His agent, attorney, everybody, the whole team, black women. Okay. I love it. I love it. You know, so shout out to him. All right. So let's, let's, let's get into this JJ Jojo C because I sent you something earlier this week, (laughs) the AAVE. I sent you something earlier this week and a lot of people don't know about it. I just learned about it. 
that mm-hmm. goodbye is actually God be with you. And yeah. it's been shortened. Yes. And of course you knew that. And you're like, well, actually, because you love hitting the, I did, well, I actually. Didn't with the well, actually. It, um, you didn't actually say true. those words, but in the, in, in the way you responded, it was a well, actually response. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so you had some really interesting insight into the AAVE JJ Jojo C. So go ahead and break that down for the people out there who don't understand it. Cause you were an English major and you know all about this stuff, I guess. Yes. I guess that's what the people say. You know, I'm an English major while I'm in school. Once I get the degree, I'm a linguist. I, I'm going to need you to like internalize that, that you are, a, you are a history major while you were in school. Now that you have the degree, you are a historian. Okay. Internalize that and really like, you know, feel that in your spirit. Yeah. So <laughs> you okay. did the work, you got the degree, like, Barely. like I mean, but still, like my point is claim it. So you, you sent us the thing about goodbye being God be with you. And I gave you another example, howdy, um, being, I guess, a shortened version of how do you do? It becomes then how do, then how do and then given different, you know, accents, depending on where you are. And that's how it becomes like that. And this is a common linguistic feature, not just in English, but in a lot of languages, but in English, in standard American English, this is a common thing. It's a common feature of, you know, standard British English or standard Australian English, things like that. But what's interesting is while these things are common and accepted in standard American English, they're seen as ghetto when we're talking about them in African American vernacular English. Um, a lot of people look at AAVE as if it's bad English. It's not bad English. It's a, well, some people call it a vernacular. Some people say it's a dialect. I personally think it's a dialect. The difference being a vernacular just deals with language and grammar. Dialect deals with language, grammar, and your actual accent. And I think when we speak, when I speak AAVE, which I'm not doing right now, I'm speaking standard American English because we're on this podcast. But when I speak AAVE, I have a different accent when I speak it than when I speak standard American English. When I speak standard American English, I kind of have this mid-Atlantic accent Mm -hmm. because that's where we're from. Uh, We're from Maryland, Virginia. So we're going to have a mid-Atlantic accent. Um, but when I speak African American vernacular English, my accent does change, which is why I find that it's a dialect. Um, but it, I mean, the history of it is, is not that, it's not that deep, right? When they are bringing enslaved people over from West Africa, one, they're mixing us up because they don't want us to be able, um, to, um, Communicate with each other. Communicate with each other, right? right? So they're mixing up different tribes and different people, different uh, accents, different languages that are being spoken. So they're mixing us up, number one. And then number two, a lot of times we're working alongside indentured servants from France, from Ireland, right? Who are speaking a different dialect of English. Yeah, they're still speaking English in Ireland, but it's very different from Great Britain. It's very different from other places. Mm -hmm. So we're learning English alongside the enslavers and the indentured servants. So what you get out of that is not necessarily like what you find in the Caribbean, which is like a Creole. um, But that's where African-American vernacular English is kind of born out of. Okay. Learning English in that way. And it's going to create different ways of saying things because you're learning, you're pulling English from different sources. So basically what you're saying is, is that the quote unquote ghetto language Mm -hmm. that people in this country love to put on black people. You're doing a lot of air quotes for that. (laughs) (laughs) That whole sentence just now for everybody who's listening to the podcast. (laughs) He only really needed to air quote maybe one or two words, but he air quoted the entire thing. <laughs> and I really want to start getting on people who overuse air quotes. Like you don't have to do the whole sentence in air quotes. Yeah. 
I, yeah. I'll be going back and looking at uh, the, the videos. I talk so much with my hands, like yeah. my hands, are, my hands don't be still. They, they just, but anyway, back to my point. So the, the ghetto language that, that a lot of white Americans try to put on black people, guess what? You need to put it on yourselves because the majority of our language that we speak, even when we decide to speak proper American English, is still this bastardized version of British English. Is basically mm, what you're saying? No, it's not <laughs> bastardized because the, when you say that it's bastardized, you're kind of giving it this, it's falling into that implication of it being bad English. It's not. It's just not standard American English. It's a different vernacular. It you is mean a standard English. British English. Standard no, American about. English. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about, uh, what did they used to call it? Ebonics. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the English that we speak here in America. Mm -hmm. compared to British English. Yes. You're saying that that's not bastardized. It's just American English. It's just American English. It's just standard American English the same way it's standard Australian English or standard Irish English. It's, there is typically the standard English you're taught in schools wherever you are at, right? And that's the standard American English that we learn when we have language arts in elementary school. Mm -hmm. But then there's also your regional dialect your regional vernacular, African-American vernacular, these are not bastardized versions of them. They're not bad versions or incorrect versions. They're just different. Hmm. They're just not the, it's just not standard American English. Standard American English is not the only accepted English in the world. Like that right. makes no sense. It's not even the original English. It's only a couple hundred years old. It's this, this place is not that old for Americans to really have this, <laughs> idea in their head <laughs> compared to other countries like this place is not that old 1776 brother like it's not old like we're very young in terms of other nations but we have this idea in our head that what we do is correct we don't have an accent everybody else does no no jackass <laughs> there's a handful, there's a handful of accents just on the east coast just right. the East Coast alone. Somebody from New York sounds completely different from somebody in North Carolina, which sounds completely different from somebody in Florida. So that alone should let you know. There's no, I, I don't even really know what the standard American, it's what you're taught in school, I guess. But um, there isn't any, even a standard American accent. But no, AAVE, I say this all the time, it is a true dialect with, hard and fast grammatical rules. It is, it, there are rules to the way that we speak, which is why when we hear other people who think of AAVE as just slang, right? Mm -hmm. And we hear them speak it, we like, you don't even make sense right now. But to them, all they're hearing is you ain't got to be all the, the, and they're thinking <laughs> that there aren't actual rules to the way that we speak grammatical and syntactical rules to the way we speak and that's why y'all sound so dumb when y'all <laughs> diminish the way we speak and act like it's slang slang is temporary slang is ephemeral slang is always changing our language is not it's i mean language is not math it's fluid right mm -hmm. it is what we say it is we say now that it's goodbye we don't say god be with you anymore it's so well you say it at church yeah you know, I mean, you know, because God is good all the time. That's uh, that we know that. I mean, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, so, but we've accepted that Google is the verb you use when you're talking about searching for in uh, information on the internet, right? Or just or just searching for information. It just searching for information. Yeah. yeah, we've accepted that that's now a word within our lexicon. So. Ma again, like language is not math. It's very fluid. So yeah, there is some fluidity in African-American vernacular English, but it has rules. Like, and the thing that I love so much about AAVE is it's contextual. So that's also another part of it. Like, like the phrase you good. Right. Okay. It just depends on the content. It depends on how we're saying it. It right. can't be written and understood by nope. everybody. You can't write you good on a piece of paper and people be like, I don't know. What is that? 
what context are you saying that? <laughs> like, it could cause a problem through text message. It can cause a problem. Speaking AAVE through text message can cause a problem. Right. If you don't understand the context in which I'm saying he been over there versus he been over there. Like there's nowhere to change. <laughs> you have to capitalize the bin so or, that you know. Or str- or misspell it by putting like multiple E's in there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that I know which type of bin you're talking about. You're using the habitual B, which is a very common feature in African-American vernacular English, the habitual B. What is that? The habitual B is when we use the word B to indicate habitual action. So... Instead of, you can say he be at work or he be at work. Like it's a different, <laughs> like he be at, we, it's understood he's, he working versus he be working. It's, we, it's understood that he be working is he's habitually working. Mm. Whereas he working, where he at? Oh, he working. He's just at work right now. Sort of like he doing the most. Right. Of, compared to he be doing the most. Right. Like right now he's doing the most versus he's always doing the most. And um, so that's another part of AAVE is that we also develop these speech patterns to confuse white people. We don't necessarily want them to understand what we're saying. And by and large, it has worked. They don't (laughs) understand what we're saying. It pisses them off. They try to use it. They try to use it. We tell them that doesn't really make sense the way you said it, because grammatically, there's a different set of grammatical rules in AAVE. So grammatically, what you just said doesn't make sense. Then it makes them even more mad. And so they dismiss our language or our vernacular as something less than. But the point is... We don't want y'all to be knowing what we're talking about half the time, okay? That's why we speak with a lot of connected speech. So sometimes when you listen to us talk, it just be running all together. And you be like, what did they just say? Oh. You don't need to know. <laughs> Could there be another term used instead of African-American vernacular English? Because we do know other races that speak A-A-V-E fluently. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, if you grow up in a black neighborhood, but to do that is to just hang out with a lot of black people. Yeah. But to do that is to erase the history of the vernacular, Ah. how it came into being to do that is to just dismiss, which a lot of people would love us to do. They don't, they would love to speak AAVE, but not have to acknowledge that it came from black people. Mm. That is a language and a vernacular that we built we created it. We took bits and pieces of the information that we we're given and we decided these are the rules or how we're going to speak. So we must keep that label for yeah. AAVE just like they keep that label for English. It's from England. Exactly. So, yes. okay, I get that. Yes. Everybody, y'all learned something today. Y'all learned yeah. about the AAVE JJ Jojo C. Mm-hmm. Um, let me think. Another um, fun linguistic feature is as redupli- reduplication. So that's when you repeat a word, right? So that it either um, indicates the degree or severity of something, specificity, or to clarify the meaning of something. So I'm like, as opposed to saying, you good? Or are you good, good? He be oh, working. He be working. He be working, working. Like he really... He, he really be working. Or if somebody, um, this is actually from um, a content creator, What's Good English. Um, I definitely uh, suggest that you follow him. Uh, also a content creator named Sun Michelle. Um, but he said, you know, you offer somebody some, some Doritos. Nah, you ain't got no chips, chips. You know that what I'm talking about for chips, chips, is just regular chips. Right. I don't want Doritos. I just want some chips, chips. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> instead of saying, "Hey, you got some potato chips," right? We say, "You got no, some chip chips." Yeah, you got some chip chips, like just like some regular chips, some chips, you know, chip chips, <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, we're also a zero copula language, which I think other you know you're using all these big words. I'm gonna explain them because <laughs> I <laughs> look. 
I, you say these words and I'm just like, all right, I don't even understand what that's what you mean by that in context. I, I said reduplication, reduplication. I got that. I keep I trying to say reduplication. I don't, I don't know, know why that. either, but I got Redu that. Yes. Okay. So zero copula means that we drop is and are. So, is and are. Yes. Okay. Because if you think about it, in certain sentences, what are is and are really doing? So instead of saying we are swimming, we just say we swimming. Right. Because right. what is are really doing in that sentence that swimming, we swimming. Like there is no reason to add are. It's unnecessary. Did so we, we learn that there's a reason in, in language arts in elementary school? In standard American English, but in African American vernacular English, swimming is the verb and it's right. doing right. all the heavy lifting. And if we say we swimming, well, who's swimming? We are. What are you doing? Swimming. Like it's, you don't, R is really not doing anything. The only time we do not drop is am. We still use am. It retains 100% of the uses. Like, I am going to the store. You know what I'm saying? You can't say I'm going. Uh, no, I still said um. Yeah, we're gonna use am. Yeah. Am is gonna stay. <laughs> am or the or the contraction contraction of it. Time. Yes, we don't say I go into the store. Nobody the contraction says. of it. Yes, the contraction. You don't have to air quote. <laughs> I know. I, for those for those who are watching the video, I just did air quote just to be funny. Yeah, you add air quotes. So the, it's it AAVE needs to start getting the respect it deserves. Um, there's a really great um, content creator on YouTube. His name uh, on YouTube is Lang Focus, L A N G Focus, right? One word, and he's got a great video on African uh, American vernacular English um, that I suggest people watch. I got a lot of my information from there. But we um, we built this, and and it's ours. It's it's Fubu. We built this language. Yeah, um, but I don't. Th we're not gatekeeping it for people who respect it. There are people out here, and a lot of the argument is, especially on social media today, that Gen Z, their whole identity is just. Um, now, their identity is a bastardization of AAVE, right? Everything that they say, their whole way of speaking is just this really bad form of AAVE. Um, so we gatekeep in that sense because it's like you really don't even have respect for the way that we speak. And you're out here using it for clout and as if it's slang and it's not slang. Mm. It has real roots in America. Mm. It is a vernacular born out of American history and American Preach. life. And it deserves some damn respect. I'm tired of these kids walking around <laughs> speaking a bit. And then we correct them and they're like, whatever, it's just slang. It's not. You said that like a real value. I, and you know who, because we know who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> There was a whole fight <laughs> against uh, with the millennial, with white millennials and white Gen Zers about who's cool and who's not cool. And black folks are just sitting back looking at like, both of y'all are just pretending to be us, but not well. <laughs> so not, <laughs> this is a dumb argument. <laughs> That's my two cents on that. All right. Well, folks, you didn't learn something. That's what you come. That's what you come to this podcast for, to learn. Hopefully. Learn something. And what what I didn't know, and I found out through my research, and I'm just upset that I didn't know this, February 1st is um, National Non-Code Switching Day. It's a day you do not code switch. February 1st. First day of Black History Month. We don't code switch. Why? Because, um, so, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about code switching. I, as a linguist, understand that there's instances where you can speak formally and informally, right? Mm -hmm. And I think in order to be understood by everyone, you should speak a standard form of English. But I don't think that speaking AAVE should, in the eyes of other people, make you look less intelligent or less competent. I don't think that speaking AAVE should deny you access to opportunities 
or resources. You know, we are a long way from that. Yes. A long, so there's, long so way. Having just one day where we don't code switch. I see this funny um, video going around on TikTok where it's a lady, a black lady sitting at her desk with her head down, just shaking her head. And the caption is, I told a uh, meeting at work, that's some white people shit. And now I don't know how to. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, but there's also this instance, there was a video of a gentleman. Um, he made a video. I, I can't remember what the context of the video was about, but he was just basically saying, I, I want to say it was like a female boxer or MMA, something he was talking about. And it's like, yo, you can't touch her. She, she, you can't even touch her. And a white woman got in his con comments and started making a bunch of videos about how he's talking about sexual assault. Well, touch in our community is not, that's not, yeah, that's you not... can't touch her. It means you can't compete with her. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's not, we don't mean touch as in physical touch, but because people don't understand hmm. they start getting into lanes they they not they not in that lane if he was talking about that we would have said something right we would have said something so <laughs> should there be a class taught on aave I in think so. yes. public schools yes during black history month if you want to do it like just during that, that month if you want to do it like that, if you want to say, all right, we're going to talk about Negroes for 28 days. <laughs> <it's> okay. <laughs> if you want to do it that way, fine. But I also think you should, uh, and a lot of teachers are doing this, and this is great because we need more black teachers doing this. We need more black teachers, period. But we need more black teachers doing this. Well, my black um, ass wasn't going to be no teacher. <laughs> we need more black male teachers, too. No, by the way. no. Uh, this ain't happening at elementary. Especially in elementary, especially when they're at that impressionable age and they need to see black males and black females in positions of leadership and power. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very important. So especially at that elementary school age. But a lot of teachers are in, are incorporate are not correcting the students when they speak AAVE. They're incorporating it into their lessons to mm -hmm. teach about subject verb agreement and things like that. And We're not in Florida. Well, definitely not in Florida. And as we are seeing, also not in Ohio, but we're going to talk about that. <laughs> we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> well, no, not, no, no. We don't know about Ohio. We just know a we certain. Don't know, we don't know about Ohio yeah, writ we, large, but yeah. I have some suspicions. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I got some suspicions. Okay. <laughs> but we don't, all right, all right, Ohio. You can look at a little sus over there, but we're going to. We're going to get we're into that. See where it goes. Yeah, we're going to looking sus over there. Damn it. <laughs> All right, sis, you brought up <laughs> you brought up Ohio and I sent you a story. Mm -hmm. Uh this is the reason why you brought it up. So in Ohio, the Lawrence sisters who have started the school that's called the Decident. Hold on, it's called the Dissident homeschool. The dissident homeschool. So there are two sisters that started a homeschool kind of system. And they're also neo-Nazis. So they're literally teaching racist white supremacy mm -hmm. as a homeschool curriculum. Mm -hmm. So they were and once again, once again, and I, again, I'm speaking politically. We see you white women. Well, I mean, obviously, it's going to be white women, right? The two, obviously? Well, it's about white supremacy. Obviously, it'll be them? <laughs> I mean, that's what I I'm mean, thinking. I mean, I don't think you're wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, the Ohio, the Ohio school administration system, and I'm messing that all up, but you, you know what I mean, the Ohio Education Department. So there's literally nothing that they can do because they are fulfilling the requirements of homeschooling with the basic principles of their curriculum as far as, you know, English, math, science, social studies, all that good stuff. It's they, just an extra class. Well, I don't know if it's an extra class. Like supremacy 101. Oh, I don't know if it's an extra class. It's just the theme. Like they're not teaching. If they're oh. teaching slavery, 
then they're teaching like it was a good thing. If they're, yeah. they're not teaching civil rights, if they are teaching civil rights, it was this bad thing that happened, civil rights. Like, and, and they're indoctrinating children. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not like a small thing in Ohio. It's a, it's a group. It's a group yeah. of neo-Nazis uh, that, are, that are teaching these kids. And, and there's nothing that the government can do. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also this thing called the First Amendment and freedom of speech. And a lot of people often get that confused because they're like, they think freedom of speech means that you can say whatever you want. And it does. Freedom of speech means that the government can't shut down your speech. You can get right. smacked in the mouth if you, you walk can. down the street for saying. You can and you will. Right. You can get fired for saying something. That's yes. not the government. The government can't restrict your speech. So the, the government, there's nothing that the school system can do to shut this down. Uh, and in a way, I hate it. I hate it. But in a way, it, under the First Amendment, they have a right to spew whatever hate that they want to spew and teach their kids whatever they want to teach their kids, no matter how wrong it is. But for people that say, oh, this country isn't racist, here's another example. During Black History Month, here's another example of, and it's an offshoot of an American institution, right? It's an offshoot. But it's a way it's it's schooling. So homeschooling is still an offshoot of American institution that is building the next generation of white supremacy. Yeah. Uh, so I just thought that was really interesting. And the fact that you can't do anything and, and it makes sense. You can't do anything as long as they are fulfilling their requirements. They can teach their kids whatever they want to teach their kids. Yeah. And part of me is like. I, I understand the feeling of saying, well, they should start dictating what can be taught to children. But then. But they are doing that. The, I mean, not that you can just, when you homeschool your child, you can pick your curriculum and you can make it a white supremacist um, informed curriculum. Like there's no one saying you can do that. You can, and that's the problem, but also you don't necessarily want the government deciding what's, what's appropriate for children to learn. But they are doing that. The government is absolutely deciding what's appropriate. For, I mean, we see it in Florida. We see it in other states. Is these, are they banning so many books that are being mean, taught the in the public school? Huh? No, I mean the federal government. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We don't, but, we don't want that kind of oversight. Um, we I don't, don't like, when, I don't like when the state and local governments do it either. I don't like what's going on in Florida. I don't like that they're straight up lying and that college board is actually, actually redesigned the African, you know, the African American history AP course. Mm. I don't, I don't like that. I mean, but there's, it's kind of like, you don't want them deciding but at a certain extent, I'm like, like some things it should be universally understood that this is not okay. But then the fact that white supremacy and anti-Semitism and racism is alive and well within the halls of our government True. and within Congress itself, um, it's kind of hard to say what everybody considers to be right and okay for children to learn. It's just, I mean, education and children are such a tricky issue mm -hmm. because if you look at children, when you start elementary school, kids don't block themselves off. No. They don't segregate themselves. Kids just play with each other yeah. based on interests, right? Yeah. Like, hey, I like to play baseball. I like to play baseball too. Well, I don't know too many people who like to play baseball anymore, but you, you get my general... I get just, it. Yeah. Right. I like to play video games. I like to play video games too. It doesn't, they don't, kids don't, the young kids in elementary school don't see race. They're yeah. taught. They're taught that. Mm -hmm. Or, or it's something that they're, they get from their parents at home and then they begin to get, but kids by and large, if they're not influenced, they're just going to, they're the they're purest pure, form of honesty. They're pure beings. Right. They're the purest yeah. form of, of honesty, really. Yeah. Like kids yeah. are brutally honest. They'll, they'll tell you, he yeah. stinks. Yeah. Like, you don't say that. You don't say that in yeah. polite society. But what kids. Does stomach look like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Wait a minute. <laughs> kids are kids are honest, and they're they're the pure oh. they're the purest form of of us because oh. they're not corrupted yet until we yeah. corrupt them, and yeah. that tends to happen. In middle school, you see some segregation, but by high school, you absolutely see it. Mm -hmm. These kids are already segregating themselves at a very young age. They yeah. don't even have a chance. That's the thing that bothers me. They don't have a chance to make a choice for themselves. Maybe right. when they become adults, they'll get to some awakening. But American History X ain't based off no true story. This ain't the movies, right? No. Like these no. people, these people are, are fed hate from the beginning. And if you're force fed something over and over and over again, you just tend to believe it. Yeah. So you believe that that's the truth. But so. it's hard to say, you know, because you teach your kids what you think is the right things for them to know. And if you believe in your heart that white people are the supreme race and that we we should be, st they should be standing above others and things like that. If you truly believe that that is what is right and a lot of them godly. <laughs> That's what if y'all if y'all are if y'all are listening to this, she just made a face. Y'all, if y'all only listen to this, y'all really need to go on the YouTube channel and watch the video feed because the video is hilarious. But, but just our facial expressions and me constantly talking with my hands. I'm talking with my hands right now. You can't see yeah, it if yeah. you because you because you listen to the audio. But if you was watching the video, you could see. Damn, Bruce be talking with his hands a lot. But anyway, yeah, you know that they, they, you're right. Those parents mm -hmm. absolutely believe that. Yeah. But so they, just just in the way that I believe that these institutions are corrupted by white supremacy, and that's what I'm going to teach my children, that they need to be advocates for themselves in a system that hates them, mm -hmm. but will simultaneously commodify them if they could. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I believe that that's what's right. Not that I'm siding with Nazi, neo-Nazis, but I can understand... You know what I'm saying? That yeah. if that while I believe that this is the right thing, they believe that this is the right thing to take, teach their children. No, we're not equal. We are better. And here are the reasons why we think that's the case. Now, even though, you know, just two eyeballs <laughs> should show you that. Not even two. One. LeBron all you James need is one. And Stan LeBron James next to, I don't know, well, name a white person. <laughs> I don't understand where you're going with this analogy. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to make a point. Uh, just any you, white person or a white basketball player? Just any white person. It doesn't matter. Uh -huh. James Woods. Yeah. If you put LeBron James next to James Woods, you're like, hmm, which guy's better than the other one? We don't know. That's the point. <laughs> okay. I was, just, there was no way. That was a real really roundabout way of, of getting to your point. I was like, what, but, you, what, you, what point are you making here? Sometimes you need two eyeballs. If you watch, uh, what is it, the Trailer Park Boys, and then you see Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about astrophysics, I don't know how you say one is better than the other. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. Well, you just and talking about if you just put them side by side and just look at them without knowing any other, without knowing that they're the Trailer Park Brothers and 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 Neil deGrasse Tyson's astrophysics just standing side by side. Yeah, how do you know? Okay. Like, just use your eyeballs. How, grab two random people off the street, one black, one white. How can you look and say oh, this one, this person's better than this other person? You just really, you can't do that. But you know what so, they're doing, right? They're, they're taking examples. Like you're going for face value. You're saying you put these two people, you don't know anything about them. How can you say one is better than the other? But that's not what they're doing. They're taking no. their distorted version of history and saying, well, obviously we're better than them. Okay. Well then let's put it like this. So it's uh, what, 2023? Yes. That's what they say. That's what they say. Ancient Sydney. You, you All doing right, math? So in the last 158 years, since 1865, mm -hmm. we've gone from being enslaved mm -hmm. to the president of the United States. Yeah, that's, that's what we did. In 158 years. That's what, like two generations. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Where in what way? Wait a minute. Did you say 158 <laughs> years is two generations? <laughs> that is not two generations. Yeah, 79. That's like three generations, maybe four. Oh, it's two 79-year-old people living back to back. Okay, I, I guess if you want to put it that way. I, I think yeah. it's, I mean, all right. I mean, you're born 1865, you live 80 years, you probably had kids, your grandkids, and then they, some, maybe your grandchild was born. and then uh, some Right, so that's multiple generations. My point is, <laughs> a lot of us have great grandparents. A lot of us have great grandparents that were enslaved. Great grandparents, I said. I, I heard what you said. I'm trying to do the math. I, I don't, because we knew our great great grandmother. Yes. People in our family just happen to have children young, children except very for young. us. Uh, yes. But okay, yes, I understand what you're saying. Like my point is, it ain't been that damn long. And it hasn't it's been, been that long. Okay. Years. We have we have not even hit our second centennial of being free. Okay, we have that's, that's a really good point. So I, in my last episode, I equated it because the argument that a lot of people will give is that everything is equal now. And I'm like, no, it's not equal because if, if me and you were on a racetrack, and we had to run four laps to get to a mile. If you got a three lap head start, there's no way that I'm going to catch you. Mm-hmm. And that's essentially what has happened throughout the generations. You know, we were held back in that race. So it doesn't matter if you give us rights during certain generations. Yeah, we might close in on some of these laps. And we will do. But it's going to take, it's going to take multiple, multiple generations. And 200 years still ain't enough. Yeah. 200 years is still not enough when we were enslaved for how long? (laughs) <laughs> right the six, 16 what 16 we first no got on yeah. no we got here in 14 like no when was the first no so africa 1600s early 1600s like 16 16 16 something like that so we were in sleep i think we were asleep for like 250 years or, or 300 years yeah. or something like that it, i something. think it was the 1500s yeah um I don't know. Somebody will correct us. Somebody oh, will. And let me tell you something. And somebody absolutely will. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. no, I've been 16, getting... 16, 19, 20 to 30 enslaved Africans arrived at Port Comfort um, in Hampton, Virginia. So 250 years. Mm-hmm. 250 years. Uh, so 250 years. So we still got 100 years to go before we even matched the amount of time that we were enslaved. Right. Get out of here. Don't, don't, yeah. And... and on top of all of that, on top of all of that, it's going to take us another hundred years to even get close to being caught up in the race. But we still keep getting tripped up because there are generations out there teaching their children white supremacy. So white supremacy will continue on. So even though we're in that race and we're slowly but surely catching up, we're constantly being tripped up by rocks or pebbles that are being thrown in that racetrack that are causing us to fall the slip and we have to get back up mm-hmm. and start to, and continue on with the race. It's not a clean race. So that's, that's the point that we're bringing this up, especially during black history month where I guarantee you, they ain't teaching no black history, not the black history that, that should be taught. No. So yeah, that's, that's the whole reason why we're bringing this up. And that's the beauty and the devil of this country. The beauty and the ugly, not the devil, the beauty and the ugly of this country. We have a right to say and teach what we want to say and teach. Mm -hmm. But everybody has that right to say and and teach what they want to say and teach. And while there are people out there that say, hey, we want equality and equal for all, there's a bunch of people out there saying, no, we don't. We want all the power and we're going to maintain all the power by storming the Capitol because we don't like the election. You ain't told a lie yet. I mean, I, I done told some lies in my life, but not, not what I was just not saying. Segment. 
Not in this segment. All right. Well, that's all I got to vent about on today's episode. Well, for those of you out there that are listening and watching, this is the tamed episode. This is the one that we put out there for free. But there's one behind a paywall, the uncensored Mm -hmm. after hours episode where we let loose and be free. Click the link in any of our bios and social media and join our Patreon page for just $5 a month. You get the after hours episode with me and my sister. You get the uncensored episode with me. That's almost an hour a week of extra content, almost four hours a month of extra content for only $5. And you get the raw real, uncensored. And we tell it like a TI is, but we're not gonna do it on certain platforms. Plus we be cussing, right? So you gotta yeah. put that behind the paywall. Yeah. YouTube will yeah. let you cuss. It will. But not really, really. Kind of sort of. Yeah. So that's the thing. If we were our real selves the way we are behind the paywall, all of our videos would get taken down. I don't know if all of them get taken down, but the majority. The vast majority. Yeah, the majority. The majority. Yeah. So join the Patreon page to, to get that raw real. Jay, I'm going to ask you like I always do. Mm-hmm. You've had time. You talk to friends. Yeah. yeah. What do you want to say to the people? I told you this month is going to be the same. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> and on that note, I'll holler. Thank you solicited perspectives with Bruce Anthony. Please subscribe, like, comment, share, and donate. Donations help us keep giving you this free content each and every week. Until next time, howdy 5,000. Peace. Freedom over fame. The cycle stays the same. Freedom over fame.